So welcome to session nine of Life Discover. And in this session, we're going to be looking at what it means to follow Jesus. Now, in the age of social media, there's no doubt that in our world today, follow means something very different to when Jesus used that term to follow him. Today, I could follow people on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all sorts of social media accounts. And I would have their comments, their photos, their contributions, they'd come up on my phone or my laptop. But is that really what following means? I think the idea of following has been diluted and devalued in our current times. And I also think that's the case with friendship. You know, we can have huge amounts of friends on social media, but do they define what true friendship is all about? Now, I don't engage in Facebook or Twitter apart from for work and for reading articles of interest, mainly to protect my time and, and my mental health. But when I did, I think I had about 500 friends and some of you will be going, wow, that's amazing. And some of you are going, that's nothing. It's so small. But the reality is that however many friends I might have on social media, actually the number of friends probably we all have is fairly small. There are people on my Facebook friends list that I might not have been in contact with for years. And maintaining that type of relationship is really easy. They're on a list. But real following, real friendship, real relationship is far more costly than being on a list or following a particular social media account. So when we engage with the Bible, when we look at what God is focused on, then we can say that God's primary focus is on relationships. It includes our relationship with him, our relationships with other people, our relationship with his creation, and of course, even how we understand our own self. In fact, when asked, what is the greatest commandment of the Lord? Jesus replied, of course, in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 40, with the words, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So those two greatest commandments are both about relationships. And it's clear that Jesus' priorities for us in following him are for us to be focused first and primarily on our relationship with him and then with other people. So much of what we've done so far in Life Discover is about embracing who God is and from that knowing who we are. When we understand who God is, that he's our father, that he's our saviour, that we are his children, that we know our identity in these things, then following in some ways becomes a natural response. We see that Jesus is not an accessory that seems nice to put on when we need him, but for the rest of time has no real effect on our lives. But we actually see Jesus as someone we need to have a constant relationship with and who, like all good relationships, is someone we need and want to spend time with. Paul, in fact, tells the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17 to 18, that to, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So this isn't about spending time now and again. This is about sharing the whole of life with him. And of course, the key to all relationships is communication. So to follow Jesus means being in his word, being in the Bible daily, being in constant prayer with him to allow him to communicate with us as well as us communicate with him. And when we spend time with someone, we get to know them. And this is crucial to knowing how we can follow Jesus in all areas of life. You get to know the one with whom you are in a relationship with, but you also get to know what his will for you is, what he wants you to do with your life. And perhaps even more importantly, what he doesn't want you to do with your life. To follow someone, in our case, to follow Jesus, also does mean to follow what he says. And this is what we call obedience. In James 1 verse 22, James tells us to live out the message and not just merely listen to it. Following is about obedience, not just believing. And in fact, if we believe it and do nothing about it, James says in the same verse that we deceive ourselves. So we're called, therefore, to obedience, to act on our beliefs. Jesus himself said in John chapter 14, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So when we commit to following Jesus, we must recognise that this is far more than just a decision. This is a commitment for life and it involves sacrifice. If we follow Jesus and it's not costing us anything, then I would start to question, who are we following? There's a clear reference in the Gospel of Matthew about following Jesus and what it costs. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 24, it says, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So before the following, there is a need to deny ourselves, to deny ourselves of the things that we want. Because in taking up our cross, we're effectively looking to, to crucify our own selfish nature so that we trust God's plan 
for our lives. So yes, there is, of course, a cost to following God's plan. But that plan brings life into the places we go. Following Jesus is what is truly bringing transformation into our lives, to our families, to our communities, and ultimately to all that we are connected with. Jesus says to some of his disciples with their boats, with their nets, with their equipment, their relatives and their possessions, he says to them, follow me. And the response is clear. They got up, they left everything and they followed him. In Matthew 8, when some men were asking about being his disciples, he gave them that command again, follow me. In Matthew 10, Jesus is speaking about the meaning of being his disciple. And he says, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And in Matthew 19, Jesus meets the rich young ruler. And after testing him about his money, he tells him, come, follow me. There's also a case in the Gospel of John at the end of the book of John, where Jesus has been crucified and buried and, and then resurrected. And he appears to his disciples just before he leaves earth. And he tells Peter one last time, follow me. So over and over again, Jesus is telling those who we met in scripture to follow him. And he uses this word again today to us. So we really need to understand what it truly means to follow Jesus. But perhaps first of all, let's try and understand what it doesn't mean. So first of all, let's be honest and say that going to church is not following Jesus. Going to church should be part of following Jesus, but there is much more to it than just that. Following Jesus does not mean just believing in who he is. James chapter 2 verse 19 to 20 tells us you believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognise, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? So James says even the demons believe in who Jesus is. John in his gospel described a group of people who loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. And the Bible says these people believed who Jesus was, but they were ashamed to confess him and they were effectively lost. So it's not about liking Jesus or admiring Jesus. For those first disciples, following Jesus meant literally, physically, leaving where they were and following him wherever he went. Peter and Andrew immediately left their nets and followed him. James and John did the same thing. Immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him. They left their jobs, they left their nets, they left their families, they left their priorities, they left their plans, they left their appointments, they left all kinds of things to follow Jesus. Now today we are in a different situation and a different culture to those early disciples. We know that Jesus does not physically stand before us calling us to walk after him. But following Jesus still means leaving things behind and then ensuring that our lives are centred around him. So we need to ask questions such as, are there some things you no longer do because you're following Jesus? Are there some dreams or ambitions that you no longer have because you're following Jesus? Because the likelihood is that if you're really following Jesus, then there will be things that you, like those early disciples, will have left behind. If you're following Jesus, it means you're not following something else. So let's look some more then at what following Jesus means for our lives. Mark 3.14 says that he called the 12 to follow him so that they could be with him and that he could send them out to preach. So the first calling of a follower of Jesus is to be with him. That is the start. The preaching was a result of being with him, but God made us and created us to be with him forever. The whole purpose for which we are saved is that we might come back to God to be with him. It's also the biggest privilege of our salvation of following Jesus that we get to be with him. But it also means that we need to speak about him or confess him. Matthew 10 32 says, therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my father who is in heaven. So we need to be public about our following Jesus. It's not something that we hide. Today, we do that first of all in baptism, which is like a public notice of our commitment to follow Jesus. And we'll talk more about baptism near the end of our Life Discover sessions. To follow him is also to become like him. To follow him is to do the things that Jesus would do. And to follow him means that we love him. Jesus tells us that we are not to love anyone or anything in this life more than him. 1 Peter 1 verse 8 says, though you have not seen him, you love him. So all these things, being able to leave things behind, to be with him, to speak about him, to become like him, to love him, they're all part of what it means to follow Jesus. And following Jesus means a whole lot more than just clicking a button on Twitter or Facebook. It means leaving your old life behind as you confess him as the Lord of your life and base your whole life around him. Now, when you follow Jesus, there is always gonna be a battle between what your flesh, your selfish self wants and what God and the Holy Spirit wants for your life. 
And we face many spiritual battles in this area, seeking to do what God wants us to do. And Paul realises this again when he writes to the Galatian church in Galatians 5.17. He says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But thankfully, following Jesus isn't about trying to do something in your own strength, but it's recognising that we've been given the Holy Spirit in this battle. In the verse before, in in Galatians 5.16, Paul reminds us, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Following Jesus is about walking by the Spirit. And when we allow the Spirit to work in us, then that walk of following Christ in the Spirit becomes a whole lot easier when we fight our own flesh, when we fight our own selfishness, and when we seek to truly follow Jesus. After Jesus' death and resurrection, he took some time to talk with Peter about all he'd been through and how he denied him three times. And of course, at the end of it all, Jesus said to him those words, follow me. Peter had some questions. He had some things he wanted to know. He wondered what was going to happen to John. But Jesus said to him, what is that to you? You follow me. When all was said and done in the Gospels, Jesus' command was the same to Peter as it had been when he first found that Jesus in Matthew 4. It was still, follow me. And I have no doubt that that is what Jesus is telling us today. You know, you don't have to sit where you are right now and wonder, if Jesus was standing right next to me, what would he say to me today? You don't have to wonder that at all, because we know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And his message would be the same to you today as it was over and over and over again in his words, follow me me. It's time, church, to follow him. So in our next session, we're going to be looking at the importance of the Bible in our following Jesus, and we look forward to being together again soon. Thanks for watching and listening.